welcome back to my channel so today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this look this is an opera gel x set um i cut my mom's nails all the way down and we did this pretty simple rainbow ombre look it's done with acrylic pigments you guys have seen me do this before this technique not this exact design um and something similar so you know we'll, we'll see all that first i want to say this video is sponsored by me okay <laughs> i'm doing one-on-one -on -one classes in person i'm in the dallas area go ahead and freeze this slow this down if you need to if you want to read everything email me at tabithascott.classes at gmail.com it'll be on the screen here in a second and this class is all about gel poly gel builder gel gel x gel polish crystal work just a whole bunch of stuff. So email me if you're interested in more information. So this is my mom's previous set. I do have um, a video for this that I have not put up. I just want to do the bright colors. You know, it's like it's feeling brighter outside and warmer, especially here in Texas. I mean, we have a weird little mix of that's happening, but it's it's hot. Right. At least right now today. <laughs> so. I'm using the mean green bit from Atwood Industries, and I'm using this at a very high speed, probably about, I usually like to use it about 25, 30,000 RPMs, honestly, maybe even, maybe even a little bit higher. So I'm using this to debulk the nail, especially the lower part of the nail towards the free edge, um... Because, like I said, this is going to be cut all the way down. We do not need the length. We do not need to save the remainder of the natural nail. So as I get closer to her natural nail, I'm going to use a less aggressive bit. Now, I don't get all this footage in here. But just so you know, I start with the mean green. Then I go down to the mellow yellow. It's another Atwood Industries bit. I use that at about 25,000 RPMs. Then I go down to like a regular carbide bit, um, like a... I believe it's like a medium, medium or fine grit. Um, it's just like a smooth top safety bit. Um, just a regular, you know, not one that looks like this. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> then once I get even closer to the natural nail, I'll go in with um, the cross cut bit, which is a diamond bit. It's perfectly safe for the natural nail. Once I get that close, I'd like to use it at about 9,000, 8,000 RPMs and just to lower the product now when you see the natural nails bare they're gonna look crazy and like they're janky and messed up perfectly fine and healthy it's just that there's some product left in some areas without product so i went ahead and i took the length off with the mean green bit as well like i said i didn't catch the footage of me getting all the way to the natural nail and i didn't get a lot of footage of this but i'm using the itty bitty bit i believe that's what it's called um from light elegance this is a diamond bit as well i'm using it at about 7,000 rpms and just removing the cuticle from the nail plate just the dead skin i'm gonna get that off and like i said her natural nail looks crazy but it's because there's different there's product on there and there's different colors of product on there different shades of pink and stuff and neutral so we get all that together i'm using the opera gel x these are the um i think they're art me is the person they did the collab with i'm sorry excuse my ignorance but this is a their coffin long and there's five colors of each size and i'm using this one it doesn't have a name that i know of but it's like their most like peachy my air quote skin tone type color so i'm just making sure these fit you don't want them you want them to go from sidewall to sidewall that one you see is too small i need to go up a size you can um if you need to do like slight customizations to the tip just to make sure it gets a better fit you don't need a hundred percent perfect fit it just kind of depends like i said if you're interested in this i am doing one-on-one -on -one class we can dive deeper and i can tell you about those exceptions and you know ways to handle the situation <laughs> so at first that's what i thought i was going to do the products i were going i was going to use and you may find it blasphemous but i like to use a mix of the products i love light elegance tack so i did that instead of using the actual opera um primer i wanted to use light elegance tack so um and i'm just showing it again because that's what i decided <laughs> and then i'm using the gel x prep 
That instead of having to e-file the underneath of the tips, if you're familiar with the Gillette system and their old kind of rules, you use this product instead. It kind of eats away at it on a very low level to create texture so we get better adhesion. So what I did um, with that I wish I didn't do <laughs> was uh, that's too many negatives. I didn't put a base of the Opre Extend Gel on her natural nail first which I would have done. They lasted just fine. I did this set like some fills ago. And yes, I feel gel X. <laughs> the video before this was me doing a fill on this set. <clears throat> so they wore just fine. I just realized I would have had a less difficult time if I would have put that layer first of the extend gel. One, because these, I believe, are sculpted. Her nails are pretty flat, so I like to add a little more gel through the center of the nail to kind of compensate for that. And so I didn't do that. Like I said, they wore just fine. No issues. I just, you see me struggling a little bit trying to apply it, and I really think that is the culprit because I don't really have too difficult of a time. Gel X definitely has a learning curve. There's just really no way around it. You just kind of have to get to know and be able to eyeball how much product you need on the back of the nail. Yes, there is technique. There is best practices, of course, but some of it's just, you know, kind of getting a feel for it. So I'm using my little LED flashlight that needed new batteries in it, but I know where my batteries are, so it's giving me a little struggle on top of everything. <laughs> um... And I want to get one of those. Um, I had somebody come in and do a one-on-one. -on -one. She told me about when I, I want an LED on a stand. It'll make the Gel-X application so much easier on myself when I do it and also on um, my clients. So um, I know Opry has like a little stand, but it's not really tall. Well, I think they have like a shorter one and a taller one. But even the taller one, I don't find really tall. I seem gelish makes one I think but it's like a hundred bucks you know I think anyways don't let me get to telling you wrong but that's what I want is something on the stand that can be on so when I get it where I want it it's good to go also I habitually apply them like this I'm trying to use a technique where you basically use your middle finger I would use like my right hand because I'm right handed use my right middle finger as support behind her finger and then apply it with my pointer and thumb on the same hand. So I'm basically apply it one handed so I don't have to move. You see, I'm moving my thumb around the nail because it doesn't cure under my thumb. So I have to slowly move it around and cure to avoid all that. So in the future, I'm going to try to remember to do it like that. And especially if I get me one of those little LED lamps on a stand. <laughs> So when we originally did this, we had another plan and I thought I needed all these brushes and tools and yeah, so I thought I was showing y'all what was about to happen. I thought I was about to do this. And honestly, guys, I think um, my mom didn't have faith in me and mostly it probably came from me not having faith in myself. So she was like, um you know we can just do something else so this is what i thought all the colors we were gonna do she wanted to get green on her nails today then all of a sudden we're doing this <laughs> so this is and don't get mad at me this is a sample gel polish color the reason i tell you that is because when you're doing this process the white that you want to use you want it to have a little bit of a tackiness to it but you don't want it to have a noticeable slip layer or tacky layer so you may need to try different brands and i keep saying if i can find one that works properly i will let y'all know and like top of that is of no help let me tell you one we need to come together as a community and figure this thing out okay <laughs> two what you're looking for, like I said, is a color that doesn't have, like if you took a clean finger and you cured that white after you put that white in the light and you cure it. If you take a clean finger and wipe across it and there's residue, you can see something shiny or something, you know, liquidy on your finger. That's not the white we need to use. 
we need one where you touch it if you wipe it nothing comes off and if you touch it it's just a little bit tacky so put in the comments down below if you have one like it um tell me i'll probably buy it or something like that so i could tell the other people or pin it you know in this video again this is a sample color and i don't have one on hand that i know and if i find out at some point also i'll pin the pin it as the top comment in this video so this is all the colors that i use most of the acrylic powders are from valentino beauty pure some of them are from diva acrylic system which i don't think are in business anymore and a couple of them are from nail supply glamour which is a local brand here to me but i think they have an online store i think one of them was that and so I'm using a, you want to use a very dense, like fluffy brush, kind of like a kabuki brush. Um, I said before I have, I had a kit. This is actually, <laughs> I go off on tangents. This is actually a brush from Wildflowers Nails. Um, I forgot what it's called and I don't know if they still have it, but that's where it's from. My recommendation, you can get like a uh, my set of like eyeshadow kabuki brushes. I have a set, it was like $12 from years ago from when I used to do makeup. And I have a variety of those brushes as well. But yeah, you want something that's dense, that has a lot of bristles, but it's soft. And so we're just going to apply this. I have it laid out in color order. Um, you want to make sure your colors blend. So it's important to put in practice color theory. Okay, so that's what we need to do. And I want to tell you just based on the pigment, because different chemicals and products make different colors so that means different colors are react differently um function differently and purple and blue in this pigment even when I, I would use it in acrylic they're a little more difficult to work with i can only imagine it's because whatever it takes to make probably it's probably in the blue because you know of course the purple some of the blue but Whatever it is, it makes it a little more difficult to use. Um, so just keep that in mind. And it may just be that brand. I really like these brand of acrylics. I did even when I was using acrylic, like actually building the nail with acrylic. These are very, very great quality. They don't turn white or marble or anything like that. So I definitely recommend them even if you are an acrylic tech or, you know, not just gel like me. Um... Yeah, I definitely recommend. And the reason I use it, I told the story before, it was an accident. Um, I didn't have pigments and my client wanted a look that really needed pigments to make it appear right, to look right. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? I was like, well, shoot, I have these and I tried it and it worked perfectly. And I actually preferred, I preferred it. Um, I think it works better. They blend better. Um but these, this purple and this blue blend, I'm really, really having to work on it. But they kind of, it's kind of the difficulty they give you is what most like regular pigments are. Because they're so pigmented, I guess, they're hard to blend. And I think that little bit of dilution with actual acrylic powder helps these blend so much better. So I'm just working back and forth, adding the purple, adding the blue. Eventually we get to a pretty good space. And these nails, they were originally supposed to have a marble effect in them. So it was supposed to camouflage it. In the end, it looked pretty good. We didn't do the marble effect, but still. So at this point, I'm going over the area with um, the pigment with a no wipe shiny top coat and i'm using daily charms diamond shine top coat say it with me use code tabitha in the number 10 t-a-b-y as in yellow t-h-a-1-0 for your discount and it can be used y'all know unlimited amount of times you can use it today tomorrow the next day you just can't use it with any other you know promotions you can try, you know, but not it's not going to work. <laughs> so I'm only top coat in the area because I make this mistake every time is I should have top coated the whole finger, the whole, the whole finger, the whole nail with the shiny top coat, the no white top coat, then applied the white, then the pigment, then the um, pigment wouldn't stick to the, you know, the nude part. But because I didn't, I have to top coat this first and thoroughly because 
Whatever you don't top coat, when you go to clean the rest, it's going to turn white. So make sure you get everything you want to get. Now we have some leeway with this design because it's going to be outlined in gold or gold leaf. We don't really know at this point, foil, something like that, but we know it'll be outlined. So if you mess up, you maybe top coat a little too far outside the nude or a little less than some of the white shows, you have a little leeway. But make sure through the middle of it that you're good. And it's going to be, it'll be hard to cam like if you mess it up, it's going to be hard to camouflage. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's the end of my sentence. Don't, don't do that. Make sure you top coat everywhere you need to top coat. Just, there, there's no do-over, okay? Well, there is. You're going to have to file everything off or camouflage it or... Yeah, you don't want that issue. So yeah, top coat everything. Or don't make this mistake to begin with. Like I said, you could have I could have did the top coat underneath first and then it wouldn't have even been sticking to the nude part. So I wiped it everything off. I used like a cleanser, acetone, wiped all the extra pigment off, and now we're trying to decide if we like either one of these. One of them is done with alcohol ink, one of them is done with nail polish, traditional nail polish. Um, disperse with acetone she didn't like those this is a gold marble ink it's from cherry or sharia I, don't, I never know how to pronounce that the marble inks from skyline beauty supply and then this is just plain with this the gold leafing around the edge of it so we're just trying to compare and see what's what and so we decide no none of the black marbling we didn't like either and just the gold around the color that's it. So I'm just using transfer foil gel, the Daily Charm transfer transfer foil gel. I'm sorry, I don't show the bottles on camera. I'm sorry, but it is from Daily Charm. And again, you go to top of the 10. And I'm applying that. And I'm going to cure that in the light for 60 seconds. And then I'm also going to allow it to air dry for about another minute. So when you're working back and forth on the hands, it doesn't really seem that crazy. I don't show the clip after this. I use a gold leafing um just to go around the edge and i'll just pat that on and just swipe off the excess um and I, you don't want to make a super clean straight line you see i'm kind of dispersing it tapping it elsewhere just so it'll look kind of distressed now um the gold leafing that i use is actually and you see you see the little white that i have that's because i didn't top coat all the way back there but thankfully i can go ahead and add that gold back there it'll be just fine but I almost made a very bad mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, the gold the gold um leafing that I'm using is like one it has like a patina to it, so it's gold and it has like shades of like a turquoise green kind of teal color at some point. I didn't have a plain gold leaf and um I didn't think my mom was gonna like it, but she was like, you know, yeah, this works, it's fine. I guess because it had that little bit of color. Tell me, you'll see it right now. Do you notice it? Can you kind of see it? Do you see it? it? Has that little bit? It looks like a aqua turquoisey color. Sometimes it gets dark in areas, but otherwise, it just looks like a yeah, just that. And I think it's kind of cute. It's not super noticeable, I don't think, but you tell me. So after I applied that, I wiped off all the excess. I'm sorry to add the clips. It wasn't really a crazy intricate process i just put it on there and swiped everything extra of course i'm going in and i will top coat again with the diamond shine no wipe top coat from daily charm now if you have any texture at this point go ahead and cure this you can take a buffer and buff any texture regain your shape a little bit just a little bit and then add a second layer of top coat so everything is nice and smooth and you don't have to worry about any texture anything sticking out like that so this is the final look like her beautiful pose i just i don't know i just whatever i like this shot of her fixing a ring and the nails just looked real cute <laughs> so look at this this feels like what does this feel like i don't know what this feels like it's not really rainbow I, it's not a rainbow technically it's just a neon gradient summertime golden look go ahead and which what's our emoji what's our emoji let's do like at the beach let's do like something beach mermaid something like that this is feeling like summer yeah <laughs> so don't forget 
to thumbs up. Go ahead and leave a comment. That's our deal. You leave a comment, I give you content. You subscribe and you ring the bell so you know when I upload. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.